Hello everyone, this is Emmanuel. We're back at Gen Con 2019 and I'm here with... I'm Logan Bonner. I'm one of the designers on uh, the Pathfinder role-playing game at Paizo Incorporated. Thank you for taking, thank you for taking the time to uh, meet up with us. Um, please talk to us about Pathfinder 2nd Edition. It's the, it just came out with it at this it's premiering at this con? Yeah, that's right. This is the, this is the first time people can pick it up. Um, we have two books out right now. We have the core rulebook, which has everything you need to play and run the game. And then the bestiary with a whole pile of monsters for you to use. Uh, we also have a whole bunch of accessories, you know, condition cards, combat pads, GM screens, that kind of thing, character sheets. Um, so all that is launching right now. Um, and then soon we're also going to have a world guide to our world of Galarian that's going to come out later. So uh, why second edition? What, what has pr prompted the company to make uh, a new edition for, the, for Pathfinder? Uh, so Pathfinder first edition uh, was based on the 3.5 rule set, um, which at this point is you know, a, a very old rule set, and some of the, the issues with it have kind of uh, gotten more clear to people over time. Um, and we had already put out a whole lot of stuff for Pathfinder first edition, and we were hearing enough from fans that we're kind of like looking for something new that we thought it was it was getting to be time to release a new rule set. And so the new one kind of covers a lot of kind of the issues, especially with high level play of the first edition um, and with kind of the base complexity of the system. There are a lot of things in first edition that are kind of like, you know, I need to calculate all these modifiers exactly every time and they're kind of like uh, hard coded. And we want to kind of make it a little more narrative, give the GM a little more control over kind of how the game was playing out. Um, and simplify some things that were kind of burdensome for, for people playing the game. So the new version is uh, easier to learn. Um, it's still very tactically satisfying because we know that's one of the things that, uh, that Pathfinder fans really like and something that we know there's a big fan base for that kind of game. So there's a lot of options and there's a lot of kind of uh, tactical choices you get to make, a lot of character building choices you get to make, um, and we're going to have a, a large number of expansions with a lot of new rules, a lot of new story concepts to kind of keep fleshing out characters more and more over time. Are there new classes, new races? Mm -hmm. uh, so in this core rulebook, uh, if you compare it to the Pathfinder First Edition core rulebook, uh, there's one new ancestry. Uh, we changed, changed the name of races to ancestries for this game because uh, we thought that was a little more accurate to what they actually are. Uh, and uh, that's the Goblin. So um, one of Pathfinder's uh, big uh, successes has been with our Goblins. You can see this is a, a, a Goblin right here. And that is also using the new class that's in the book, which is the Alchemist. Uh, so that's a Goblin Alchemist. The Alchemist was a class that we premiered uh, in first edition in the Advanced Player's Guide. Um, and it was really popular. So we kind of knew we wanted to put another class in the core rulebook. And kind of looking at things, we realized like if we really want to make the Alchemist work, we need to put alchemy in the game from the start and have alchemy kind of have a, its own conceptual space. And so we put that in the core rulebook along with the alchemist class. With the BC area, uh, what changes have you made? Have you added, uh, is there new monsters? Are there, is there new rules now containing beasts, uh, monsters, creatures? Yeah. Uh, so the bestiary, uh, it contains a lot of the classic monsters from first edition. One of the things we really put a lot of work into is kind of changing how a lot of them play to make them more kind of memorable and iconic. Because a lot of uh, first edition monsters kind of, a lot of them played the same way. There were certainly ones that had some really interesting uh, and different things. But some monsters like the owlbear, which is like a classic cool monster, didn't really do anything special that felt like it was different from, you know, a tiger. So uh, the new rules have a lot more kind of special monster abilities. And this book has uh, most of the uh, stuff that was in the first edition bestiary. It's also got some of our kind of, uh, some of the popular monsters that came in later, later bestiaries in first edition. And then it has a pretty good smattering of brand new monsters. So there will be some kind of surprises in there. What about magic? Has uh, spell casting, uh, spell, has any of that changed? Uh, yeah, so the main change with spell casting, uh, before in first edition, uh, there was a concept of caster level, which tended to make all your spells better as you got up in level, and you got more spells uh, as you went up in level. So the way it ended up kind of playing out was, the fighter is a little better than they used to be early in the game, but the wizard is massively more powerful than they used to be. Uh, so we kind of wanted to make it so that your best spells are still really strong, but your, your lower spell slots are not as strong, and you kind of, as you go up in level, you have to kind of change how you plan out your spells uh, and, and we wanted like a ninth level spell is really powerful, but we didn't necessarily want a first level spell uh, to be even more powerful than it started out. So that's kind of one of the main changes. It kind of brings uh, the martial characters and the casters a little closer in power level, while the spell casters still have, you know, really an interesting niche 
and some really cool spells. Uh, but they aren't just kind of like so much better that they, they dwarf all the other characters in the party. Would you say second edition is also made uh, for, how should I say it, um, make it easier for new players to learn as well? Because I know the first edition one, when I, the times I played it, um, was, you know, you just go straight right in. With yeah. second edition, is that made the same way? Yeah, so uh, second edition is, um, I, we think it's significantly easier for new people to learn. Part of that is it ha has a, an action economy that is very simple, but has a lot of different ways you can take it, a lot of potential. So you just get three actions on your turn and one reaction that you can take at any point in the round, but it has to have a special circumstance, a trigger before you can use it. And those three actions on your turn, um, you can use those, you can use an action to move, you can use an action to attack, you can use an action to pull something out of a belt pouch. All those are one action. So if you want to attack three times, you can attack three times. If you want to move and attack and then move again, you can do that. So there's a lot of flexibility. It's very easy for people to understand because all their actions are equal. Uh, first edition had standard actions and move actions, full round actions, all of which could be used for different things. And you kind of had to memorize this matrix of what each one did. And now it's much easier to just say, well, that takes one action, that takes two actions. Well, before we wrap up this interview, what's your favorite class and race? Oh, uh, I think probably my, uh, my favorite class um, I'm really partial to the monk. Um, it's got some really cool like stances they can go into. It's got kind of choosing your path of uh, how you advance in certain things. Um, so and there's got a lot of really interesting tactical options. And they all start with flurry of blows, which lets you take one action to attack two times, which means you can really be flexible because you can just move halfway across the fight and attack two times. Uh, you just have a lot of potential there. So I think that's really fun. Um, as far as the ancestries. Uh, one of the things we added to the game were heritages, which kind of say like, well, I'm a, I'm a halfling, but I also have this heritage, which kind of changes, changes how I am. Okay. Um, I think probably my, my favorite ancestry is the gnome. I think the, the Pathfinder gnome is really interesting. Uh, kind of uh, part of the story of gnomes is that they have to keep pursuing new interests or they'll eventually like their hair will go white and they will die. So like it's called the bleaching and that's kind of a cool thing unique to Pathfinder is that they have this kind of reason they need to go out and experience new things, uh, which I think is a really cool kind of driving motivator for those characters. Now, I, I was about to wrap up the interview, but I forgot there's two other things where, that you're premiering here as well. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's um, Starfinder, there's a new box set coming out. That's right. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about that? Yeah, actually, um, both those premiered just a little bit ago, but this is kind of like the first really big convention that they're at. Uh, Starfinder has a new beginner box. So Starfinder is our space fantasy role-playing game. So if you want to be on a spaceship and you want to shoot laser rifles, uh, but you and you want to be like you know a weird uh, rat folk person or a bug person, um, that's the game for you. Uh, so it's like high action space adventure, and the beginner box, uh, which is a pretty new product, is going to give you a really nice, like, easy on ramp to get started with the game. It's got a really beautiful presentation. It's got rules reminder cards, so it's really great for like, I want to get into this, but I don't want to just read this big dense rule book. I want to uh, have all the tools I need to play right in one box. So it's really uh, a great product for that. And there's something about the Pathfinder card game, something new coming out for it? Uh, right, we have the adventure card game, uh, which will kind of lead you through different adventures. And uh, you, it's kind of like uh, partially a deck building game because you're going to be strengthening your character over time. Um, and it has long-term character progression. Uh, it's a cooperative game. And uh, we just recently released the kind of revision of that. So there's a new starter set um, that contains the Dragon's Demand adventure. And we also have the Curse of the Crimson Throne adventure set that you can add to it. Um, and it's kind of a, a little smaller box than the initial one, and you'll have one starter set that then you can plug things into and out of, whereas the old version of the game, you kind of had to buy a new starter set for each, uh, each adventure that you went on. We kind of made it so it's like uh, not quite as expensive, a little easier, more portable, and that kind of thing. Excellent. So uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, the core book, and the bestiary, when would, that be, when would that be out? That is out right now. Excellent.